Hello, in this session we'll going to look at uh, numerical example on beam element. So this is the numerical problem given to us. Beam fixed at one end and supported by a roller at the other end has a concentrated load of 20 kilonewton. So here we have a 20 kilonewton load applied at the center of the span. So we are supposed to calculate the deflection under the load. So we are supposed to find what is the value of deflection at the loading point. So in general, we can assume the problem to be uh, having like finding out deflection at various points, slopes at various salient points of the beam, and the problem can also be on finding the value of bending moment and shear force at different points. So this beam has a length of uh, 500 centimeter plus 500 centimeter. So, the 10 meter is the beam, length of the beam. Uh, the units have to be taken consistently. You may either convert everything commonly into meters or you may have it in centimeter throughout compute and express your final answer in terms of SI unit. So, this has Young's modulus of the material given over here and the moment of inertia of the cross section given over here. So first step that we will have to do is to create a finite element model for beam. So that is an important uh, aspect in the beam. So here we have left hand we have a support, we need to create a node. At the loading point you are going to create another node, number two, right end extreme end and this also happens to be another support so we have so this model of the finite element mesh basically has two elements, three nodes, one, two, three. So element number one is between nodes one and two, and the two is between nodes two and three. We are going to, since we are modeling this with a 2D beam element at every node, we are going to identify two degrees of freedom. So at node number one, U1 is the displacement degree of freedom, U2 is the rotational degree of freedom. Similarly, at node number 2, U3, U4 are the displacement and rotations. At node number 3, it is U5 and U6, displacement and the rotations. Now, what is important, other thing that is important over here is you will have to identify the corresponding force components also. And let us also look at what are the boundary conditions that have to be applied. At node number one, we have a fixed support. Okay. So, since we have a fixed support over here, we know at a fixed support, the value of displacement will be equal to zero. And at the same time, the value of slope will also be equal to zero. So whenever we have a fixed support, the okay, boundary condition is that the both the displacement in the y direction as well as the rotation about the z axis will be zero. And here we have another support. At node number three, we have another support which is only a roller support. So this roller support is go not going to permit any displacement in the vertical direction. So value of u5 would be equal to 0. Whereas at this point, the rotation is still permitted. What does necessarily mean? So this beam will, will behave like this. It, will, it is going to behave like this horizontally and it may end up like this slightly exaggerate over here to make you understand that there can be a slope over here. So at this point the slope as well as deflection both of them are zero whereas at this point is only the deflection that is zero but there is some value of slope that is permitted in the beam. So u5 is equal to zero u6 is not equal to zero. Now we will also try to 
identify the corresponding force terms over here. So in the force term, because this is displacement, displacement will always be associated with the force. Since this is a rotation, the second degree of freedom is going to be associated with the moment. So let us designate it as F1, M2, F3, M4, then F5, and M6. So these are going to be the terms that you see in the fourth term, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the column vector. Now in this case, because there is a support and you have the displacement equal to 0, F1 here represents the externally applied force at node number 1. So at externally applied force at node number 1 is going to be 0. So whatever value of F1 we have, this gets converted into a reaction force, which can be called as R1. And similarly, the value of moment, I mean the slope at this point is 0. The fixed support is also going to have a reaction moment. At fixed support, you can, you will have a reaction force as well as a reaction moment. So we will call this as another reaction too. Now coming to this point, U3 is an unknown in the problem. Deflection at node number 3. 2 is an unknown. F3 is the force applied at node number 2. So you can see that there is a force applied at node number 2 which is of magnitude 20 kilonewton is acting in the downward direction. The value of F3 would be minus 20 kilonewton. Minus 20 into 10. M4 refers to the externally applied moment at node number 4. Number 1, there is neither an externally applied moment at node number 4 specified over here, nor there is a support that we can have a reaction moment. So this value of M4 needs to be taken as 0. Now I wish, I want you to identify what would be these values of F5 and M6. Keep in mind, this is a roller support. Roller support can have only reaction forces. There won't be any reaction moments. So at this point, since U5 is 0, this value of F5 is going to be a reaction force, which can be written as, say, R5. M6, even though there is a support here, roller support will not give rise to any sort of reaction moments. And there is even an externally applied moment is not there, the value of M6 will be equal to 0. So in total, we need to make sure that because there are only 6 degrees of freedom, there will be 6 equations that we end up with uh, in the finite element equation. So, uh, and uh, we have to make sure that there are maximum 6 unknowns in the problem. So this F1 equal to R1, this is one of the unknown in the problem, R1, M2 equal to R2 is another unknown in the problem, then U3 and we run. So U3 is an unknown in the problem, U4 is an unknown in the problem, then F5 is an unknown in the problem, U6 is an unknown. So there are exactly six unknowns in the problem. So this is the first uh, uh, analysis that you have to make before you proceed with finding out the element stiffness matrices because that's a standard procedure. You would use the standard formulae, equation, simplify, but first when you create the finite element model, uh, once it is not just sufficient to write the finite element mesh, 
You also make an analysis of what would be the nodal degrees of freedom, which of them are unknown, which of them are known. Of course, in the formulation, you will see that these values of forces reactions would be substituted as zero because in this problem, we are not interested in finding out those reactions and they automatically get eliminated using the process of elimination. Now, coming to the numericals, now for this model, we have, we'll have calculated, find, we find out the element stiffness matrices since the material, uh, the Young's modulus, um, moment of inertia of cross section length are all the same, the values of K1 and K2 will be equal. So you get it in the form of Vi by L cube. Simplify and when you do the assembly, this is the global stiffness matrix that we get. Okay. So because there are six degrees of freedom, the global stiffness matrix would be of order six cross six. Now when you write the finite element equation in the form k into q equal to f, so it is going to be six cross six in the equation. Since there is a support here, the value of u1 is equal to 0, the value of u2 is equal to 0, and there is a support here, the value of u5 equal to 0. The equation, first equation, second equation, and the fifth equation in the finite element matrix equation gets eliminated. So, after elimination, these are the terms that we are going to get. When simplified, these are the values of nodal displacements, the three unknown degrees of freedom that we get u3, u4 and u6. Keep in mind u1, u3, u5 are the displacements, u2, u4, u6 are the slopes. So the units for u1, u3, u5 would be in terms of consistent length units, centimeter in this case. Units for u2, u4, u6 would be that of the rotation which are radians. So you can see that u4 is given in terms of radian and probably there is some mistake over here. So this you convert as radian. This is not in terms of centimeter. So this has to be in terms of radian. So the value of U3 is minus 3.646 centimeter. And we in this problem, we are specifically asked you to find out what is the reflection at the midpoint or the loading point. So the final answer would be reflection at the loading point or the midpoint of the beam would be 3.646 centimeter or 36.46 millimeter is this solution. So I have listed on a few more simple problems quite similar to this with different types of loading. I would suggest you to go through uh, standard literature. Some of them can be solved problems in those literature. I would uh, suggest you to solve these problems on your own and use it for your learning. So this is a problem on a beam which is subjected to UDL. So this involves uh, use of that uh, consistent uh, nodal vector that we have derived. You will have to uh, simplify that into equivalent nodal forces. Okay. So the, this, this UDL you will have to convert into equivalent nodal forces and moments. So then this is a, a problem which is similar to the previous one. You have six degrees of freedom, six cross six stiffness matrix that has to be simplified. So here is another problem where you will be considering one, two, three elements. There is a roller support, fixed support, one load acting in the downward direction, one in the upward direction. In addition, there is an externally applied moment. So you try to solve this problem and also try to obtain the bending moment initial values. There are some more problems that are listed, uh, which are quite similar to the one. We are advised to solve these problems in order to have better understanding of the formulation of the beam element. Okay, so that brings us to the end of these uh, uh, lecture on the numerical examples. Thanks for watching.